Welcome, everybody, and thanks for, for tuning in here. I'm glad to see we got a decent crowd here. And thanks again to Navian and Debbie here. Um, you know, I've been involved in aging for 20 years. Uh, I've been in finance since 1988, 34 years. And in 2002, somebody came up to me and talked about, you know, what a reverse mortgage is. And I was telling the story. I said, well, I've been in finance for a long time, but I've heard about it, but I didn't really know much about it. But when I digged into the, the, the marketplace, the industry, and it was really about aging, I saw the huge wave of aging boomers coming into play, let alone taking care of their parents, which I found out a little bit later on. But when I saw the huge numbers of aging coming into the place, I thought it might be a good idea. So I took a deep dive and studied it, learned it. And uh, I've been in this for 20 years now. So I'm always one to think forward. And I knew this would be the day coming and it's been here for a while. Uh, and one of the first, first thoughts of my clients, talking to my clients and seeing people that are older, over 62, I was 42 at the time. And when I realized that I knew nothing about aging, nothing about my clients are all over, way older than me. So I had to take a deep dive and realize that more and more people were looking at aging and they were not healthy and they needed caregiving. So when I took a deep dive into caregiving, this, this popped up here. It's a very famous quote. It's been around for probably at least 25 years. Uh, I'm not too sure how many people uh, have heard of this quote. I don't know how many people are in the industry, healthcare or aging field, but this is so true. Uh, the quote was from Rosalind Carter. She got very involved in aging many years ago. And the quote goes as, there are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need care need a caregiver themselves. It's, it's such a great quote, and it's been used many times around the world. And she knew many years ago that this was going to be an issue. And it, it is today. Um, I'm one of the few people that you'll meet that's on a policy level, um, attending, putting a caucus at the Capitol every month, um, very involved on the ground floor, dealing with seniors themselves, and in the middle of dealing with uh, families, dealing with long-term care. Um, as we get older, we're all gonna need some form of care, and that is so true today. So thanks for tuning in. Um, I, I like to have people ask questions when they can, uh, because that way you don't forget about it. Um, if it's on the tip of your tongue. And I can address most of these uh, in detail to a certain extent. I'm a mortgage guy, but I've been trained in aging um, for a long time. Um, uh, can you see that screen? This is my bio that I put up here. Um, it's on today's topics. Okay, so... This is my bio. I always give people okay. so you know who I am and what I've been through. Um, Generations Magazine actually was started in 2005 by Kini Popo. Kini Popo was actually the first person Hawaii saw on the TV. Uh, and unfortunately, he just passed away last week. Um, but he started a magazine because he helped take care of his father. And um, after five years, four years, he decided that he closed it down in August of 2009. When I made 50, and I was working with the magazine as, as a consultant, and when I turned 50 in January of 2010, I said, Keeney, I'll help you bring it back. It's really important to the, in, to the marketplace and to Hawaii's communities and families. And he told me, no, um, I'm at a point right now, I'm going to retire, and I want you to just take over the magazine. So he basically gave me the magazine, and I converted it to a resource magazine. But what I realized, like I mentioned early on, is I didn't know much about being a senior. And I, we cannot solve problems if we don't know what the problem is. So I never think about, I mean, I had a 401k. Um, I didn't know much about retirement planning, Alzheimer's, fall prevention, elder abuse, caregiving. I heard of Alzheimer's. I knew it was a memory issue, but I didn't know much about it. I didn't know much about long-term care insurance. So I got some certifications. The biggest one is certified senior advisor. It's the only double accredited uh, designation in the, in the country in the financial services and the senior industry. 
And accreditation means basically somebody reviewed the test and the curriculum, a third party, because there are 40,000 designations in the US and only 10% are accredited. And only 1% are double accredited by the two major accredit accreditation agencies. So I have that designation. It's a very rigorous um, test. It's a three-day course. You have to do CE, but if you're in the industry, I highly recommend you uh, take this course and get the designation. It basically covers 22 different areas of aging, and uh, you'd be more informed about the different things that go on in people's lives. The other designation I have is certified long-term care. Basically, I'm certified to counsel families and planning, and it's really, really important. And then we do workshops. In fact, hopefully Nav Navia and Navian will come to that workshop October 4th at the Alamon Hotel. That's the big annual aging in place workshop. So um, hopefully uh, you guys will step out there and take a look at that. Okay. So basically I'm gonna cover some basic topics. Um, why should families plan for long-term care? That's pretty easy, but you'd be surprised. I would guesstimate probably 70% of people do not plan for long-term care. And I'll go over that a little bit later on. Uh, can families do the caregiving themselves? Very commonplace. These are gonna hit home like everybody's situation, whether your situation, your neighbor, your coworker, uh, your auntie, your friend from church, guy you golf with, it hits everybody. Whenever I'm at a function, without a doubt, somebody comes up to me asking about things about caregiving. And then what options for caregivers, caregivers, and then how can families pay for long-term care? And last one, really a solution of using professionals to plan for care. So I sprinkled in some pages here, some pictures here um, that really resonate with long-term care. Um, you know, I'll and I'll tell you a bunch of stories. I have a client of mine, um, the husband called me up, said, hey, Percy, you know a lot about aging issues. I said, yeah, what, what can I do for you? He goes, I'm looking for a scooter. I said, a scooter for you? He goes, no, my wife, my wife has a hard time walking and you know, she can't get around very well. So I said, why don't you get a walker or a wheelchair or a cane? And he goes, oh, no, it's going to make her look old, she said. I said, hello, old? So they got a scooter. Uh, but walkers are very good. There's all type of walkers, as you guys know. But I just thought I'd sprinkle that in that picture there. Why should families plan for long-term care? You know, a lot of people talk about things. A lot of people understand aging. But I'll tell you, um, oh, with the medical advances and technology, we're gonna live, gonna live longer. Um, we actually had a conference um, 2019 on regenerative medicine. And we brought in actually a 3D printer from Spain and it print on skin. Uh, 3D printers, printers right now are working on different body parts. Uh, you probably heard of fingers, uh, skin, of course, uh, I understand they're working on a liver, um, but it's coming. Uh, how soon? I just can't tell you how soon, but it's coming. Um, so the issue when I speak around town quite a bit is basically when we deal with aging. I, we're, a lot of us are healthy. A lot of us maybe not be taking medication. I have several clients at 70 years old and not taking any medication. It's a mixed blessing. And people don't realize this is that if you're not, if you don't have any chronic issues or health issues, you're not going to die right away. But a recent article in Star Advertiser uh, a couple of weeks ago it says only 17% of people will reach the age of 70 without having some kind of ailing physical mental issue. So that means down the road, you're going to need some form of long term care or possibly extended care which means you're gonna be required to stay in a facility. Um, and it's something that people, we need to start thinking about seriously. We need to start thinking about our own healthcare. Uh, obviously a lot of people are taking different supplements, um, take uh, different exercise classes. And it's really important to realize that healthy we are, the longer we live, the healthy we are, we're gonna be able to stave off some form of long-term care. The downside is you're not going to die right away. So we won't may need a walker down the road or a cane. Um, we won't be able to, you know, go on top of the roof or pick mangoes from your tree. It is something that we just need to address and we need to be able to um, 
face ourselves with um, the reality of aging. And actually next uh, October 24th, the fourth Wednesday of every month at the All in One Hotel, we will be doing monthly small workshops on different realities of aging. So today we're talking about long-term care. Uh, and it's something that even Social Security, including ARP says seven out of 10 will experience some form of long-term care. And, and that's a reality. So think about it for your own self. And when I, when I counsel families, which I do quite a bit, um, talk to your kids, talk to your neighbors, talk to your relatives about this issue. Because if you, you're one of the seven, you're gonna need to find out and navigate how to navigate long-term care. What, what does that look, they look really look like? Um, the average length of care is three years um, in a care home. Um, and if dementia averages 10 years, which according to the Alzheimer's Association, that's life expectancy with it. Um, that's a long time to be caring for somebody. I have a relative that's had dementia now for 20 years. My own mother has just been diagnosed a couple of years ago with dementia. And it's something that in the state of Hawaii, they say 50% of the people that have it are not even diagnosed. So if we have between 29 and 30, 35,000 people that have dementia, that means we have close to 70,000 people in Hawaii that uh, have, have dementia. Uh, according to ARP, it's like over 286,000 people that are caregivers, not all for seniors, but a lot for children too. But that's a huge number to be dealing with long-term care. So it's something that I tell people to start planning for, start doing your own research. Uh, it's really important because without planning, the family have to find themselves reacting when there is a crisis, when somebody has a stroke, somebody gets worse. Alzheimer's is, is debilitating and it only gets worse. Um, and it's something that leads to consequences that, that the family and the money wise have to come into play. You know, a lot of families have siblings on the mainland. How do you navigate that? How do you plan for that? Is all the burden gonna be on the people that live in Hawaii? I have a very good friend of mine that he lives in, he's from Hilo and he lives in Oakland, San Francisco, Oakland. And every six months he flies on his own dime to spend two weeks with his mother to give his sister a break. So six months out of the year, every six months he flies to Hilo. Uh, luckily Southwest goes direct now. He spends two weeks with his mother to take care of her. And I give him a lot of credit. Um, Dealing with this from a work point of view, he has to take off work, it is very stressful for him, um, let alone for the family. So his sister lives with the mom, takes care of mom. And, and, and you know these stories are people you hear all the time, but she needs a break. So he, he puts in his schedule, gives her a break. So a lot of times she goes on vacation, uh, goes to Las Vegas twice a year to get away. Um, it, you know, the children, our siblings, even including myself, we have to plan for uh, caregiving. And a lot of families that do not plan are in desperation mode. Um, the storm hits and cause a lot of infighting, cause a lot of uh, dissension in the family. We, you know, hopefully you don't have regret. Um, uh, people fight over things and when mom and dad's not able to do this, it falls on the kids and it, it caused a lot of infighting. Um, so we'll talk about a little bit later on uh, the solutions and things to do to do plan. And I always recommend bringing in professionals. But you know, when I got my certification of long-term care uh, a few years ago, when I look at the cost of care, when I look at the emotional stress it causes families, I get a call just about every week from families that need to figure out what to do. Most of the time, mom already has dementia. Most of the time, uh, dad already has Parkinson's. Most of the time, the family has been dealing with this issue for several years and they're at a breaking point. They do not know what to do. And it's quite common. However, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've always been one to tell people, you need to plan ahead. We need to start laying down some timelines, laying down some conversations with our siblings and professionals, uh, laying down some plans for 
when mom or dad gets worse and we can't take care of mom and dad, what's the plan? Because with Alzheimer's dementia, it only gets worse, unfortunately. Um, in fact, I was reading an article recently about Alzheimer's that the, the new drugs right now uh, will maybe stave off getting worse. It slows down the progression of Alzheimer's dementia, but they're really focusing now more on getting to you earlier, getting to you to understand you need to be healthier and eat better and exercise more, uh, get your vitamin D, get outside, get some sunlight, uh, be social, be active. Uh, many years ago, they told you that shokudo, uh, uh, Sudoku and word puzzles don't really help that much. Um, so it's a disease that is in the top 10. I think I believe it's number seven. By I believe 2030, it's going to rise to, I think, number three or four of disease that will kill you. And it's a very big family issue because the family has to um, get around the loved one that has the disease. The family has to realize at some point down the road, it's going to be 24 seven. At some point down the road, uh, we have to worry about elder abuse, um, scams, uh, fall prevention, uh, medications, bed sores, uh, being bed bound. I had a neighbor that was bed bound for eight years. It's something that um, is the reality of, of aging and the reality of disease. We will be doing more workshops with the Alzheimer's Association, but it's something that, you know, before we pass on, this is the area that I'm glad Navian is talking about, is navigating long-term care, is navigating what happens if my mom has bed sores. And that medication uh, for bed sores, when I found uh, me social Medicare only covers, I think, $200 or $250 of the medication. And this is a tube of cream. The medication costs $500. And I was talking to a, a professional the other day, a Medicare professional. Was, yeah, that's about right. So Medicare doesn't all cover the, all the cost of care, but this is through bed sores. So why should families plan for long-term care? It's going to happen seven out of 10 times. And I think that's a national statistic. I think in Hawaii, more like eight out of 10 times. Um, but I call Hawaii a family state. We kind of get around our family member, our loved one, whether it's my, our friends from golf or from school or from church. We will surround them with our love and our compassion and our, and our willingness to volunteer ourselves. So having a plan of some sort is the best way to go about it. Because if I always tell people, plan for the worst case scenario, expect the best. But typically, most people plan for the perfect scenario, and it blows up in their face. And then we scramble to find out what can we do. My goal has always been to educate families about long-term care. My goal has always been to find a better way to have a better possible um, life in retirement. And it is something to ask yourselves or ask your parents or your loved ones, is this a golden years in your retirement? How are you doing? And I'm telling you, eight out of 10 times, people say it's not easy. It's very difficult. And now... Um, you know, this pandemic has caused a lot of people to rethink life, not only financially, emotionally, but family life. Uh, I call it BC. How was life before COVID? And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a life changer for most of the people, most of our families. Um, it's happening all over the world. Hey, Percy, before you move um, on, um, we do have a question. I don't know if you cover this later on in your presentation, but okay. question regarding the long-term care insurance. Um, yeah. Um, I guess, how much does yeah. it pay for foster or care home and then hospice and respite? Um, yeah, um, care home coverage, uh, it's all over the place. Um, right now, there are, uh, so give you an idea, um, right now there's about 4,430 nursing home beds, 8,457 8, foster home beds or ARCH. A total of 12,895 beds in Hawaii. If And the statistic is, is something like 25,000 people need some form of care in a facility. Uh, it's, it's So right now we're scrambling uh, for beds. The biggest issue really is uh, caregivers. 
every facility, every property, even including adult daycare, home care company. My own parents had had a home care three times a week, but once a week, one of the caregivers would call in sick. Um, foster care, um, you know, is, is all over the place. And I'm not sure if you're talking about Medicaid. We'll cover Medicaid a little bit later on. Uh, care home, it runs from 4,000 to 8,000, depending on, on the bed space. Depends on whether they're sharing a, a room or not, um, whether they're uh, in a in a um, uh, arch where it's a state-run program where they can have a certain amount of beds for the household. Uh, that that's more specific, and that might maybe want to bring in somebody from the Medicaid office um, or long-term care uh, facility specialist that can do that. Long-term care insurance is something that. Um, uh, is all over the place. There were in 2000, I'll give you an idea, in 2004, 2004, there were 100 long term care insurance companies. Fast forward to 2022, 12, 12 insurance companies. And it's unbelievable. We're finally realizing. Like I said, when I got into business in 2002, we knew about aging and we, you know, it wasn't a big issue, but as things progressed over the years, it's a big issue. So big that the insurance companies have got out. The two largest carriers, John Hancock and Genworth, which was a subsidiary of GE Capital, got out of the business in 2010, I think. John, John Hancock got out 2014, somewhere around there. Um, it just shows you that they realize that they're gonna have these claims. Uh, they realize that uh, it's gonna be costly for them. And these low interest rate environments is not good for insurance companies because the premiums they pay have to, they invest it to pay for the claims down the road. And you can't get much return in insurance companies today. So that, that's a big issue. Um, hospice is Medicare covered and you know, Navin has that. Um, Respite coverage, um, there are a few places that cover that. Uh, that's a whole nother story when it comes to that because it depends on the facility. Um, and when you said processing claims, not too sure what that meant. Uh, to process an insurance claim is a task. Uh, my mother is on claim now. Um, they just moved into the Plaza Kanyoi uh, last month, July. Um, but her insurance is kicking in, paying for uh, a good bit of it, but not enough to cover the whole thing. And that's what people need to realize. Long-term care insurance was never created or be able to put forth to pay the whole cost of care. So the plaza in any kind of retirement assisted living place, the low level independent living runs between 4,500 and 5,500 for an individual. Um, for couples, I believe it's six to seven thousand, but you know, you want to check. I recommend everybody go visit a facility, take a tour, and ask to try the food if you can. Um, and it's important to to go see it, see the level of care, um, and see whether it's a buy-in or rental. Just, that's another that's another uh, webinar we could do, uh, Debbie, because it's really important to understand that. Um, Private pay could be anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 to 12,000. Um, in a facility, most of the places are 10 to 12,000 to 14,000. I believe Wilcox on Kauai is 14,000. I believe the Hilo uh, Life Care Center is 14,000, but just don't quote me on that, but that's about the range. Uh, my parents pay about 12,000 a month at the plaza. So it's, it's a big issue. Um, but he said, if you have others, I've been provide, I'm a provider asking and have been receiving inquiries. If you're a provider asking inquiries on, yeah, that, that's a whole nother cost. You know, when you talk about specific facilities for long-term care, uh, whether it's private pay or foster care, that's a whole nother area. Uh, I would probably um, recommend uh, offline some other providers that, that do this. Um, we'll talk about, about Medicaid planning a little bit later on though. Okay. Uh, let's go back to, okay. Why is my screen not moving now? Okay. Um, can families do the caregiving themselves? Most of the time it is. 
uh, I will tell you 90% of the time, um, people are doing the care of themselves. They will um, work to death to take care of mom or dad. Be very careful if you're doing it at a younger age. I have two clients right now that are 60, 62 years old and they don't have no social security because they, they work to take care of mom and dad and the aunties and uncles for the last 25 years. So they don't really have the 10 quarters of, of work to provide social security income. Hard to believe, hard to believe. Um, but that's the reality. So they have no social security. Uh, they don't wanna go back to work. So living off welfare now. Uh, Long-term care is a bear. Um, of all the people in the magazine, Generations Magazine, I'm the only one that does not have firsthand experience with long-term care. Um, I, you know, I take dinner to my parents, but not now because they're at the plaza. But it, it starts out as a part-time job. Yeah, no problem. I can handle this to the point where mom or dad needs more care or one of your siblings passed away or mom who's taking care of dad passed away. Now who's left to take care of mom to dad? So be very careful when the plan is in place at some point down the road, you may have to take it on yourself or look at other options to pay for, to, to, for the care, um, especially when you're working full time. The state did have a great plan two years ago, or is it three years ago now, that had funded adult daycare for, for families that were working. So I would suggest getting involved with Kupuna Caucus that meets at the first Friday of every month to see what's going on. If you want to get on an email list, uh, you can email me uh, and I can forward you the, 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 the links and things, but they provided funds to pay for adult daycare if you're working 40 hours a week and taking care of your mom or dad. So that was a great plan. I, I believe they're going to allocate more money, but I can't tell you right now if they did or not. It really becomes very difficult on yourself and your families. Uh, the children, I have several friends of mine, the kids are helping take care of mom and dad. Um, but there, and I recommend, I don't recommend that by the way, because the kids need to go out and make their own money, start their careers and not have to take care of grandma and grandpa, uh, because they have to worry about their own employment, their own families. But we did a story in a generations magazine on the sandwich generation, people dealing with their family, taking care of their kids, raising their kids and taking care of mom and dad. Um, it's, it's a phenomenon in Hawaii because I call Hawaii a family state where we're dealing with so many issues. We, I think we lead, lead the country per capita in multi-generational families. Uh, we have Ohana housing here. So it's a big issue, it's a big topic. I'm sure everybody knows somebody that's dealing with their kids and taking care of their parents. But it's very, it takes a lot of toll on the family. Um, and if there's a way to pay for private pay care, um, there's a lot of nonprofits that we covered in the magazine to support seniors and their families. Um, there's, there's nonprofits out there that can deal with the legal, the financial, uh, respite care, things like that. Uh, somebody put in there, I, I work adult daycare part-time, spend twice a week, four hours on adult daycare. Yeah, it's about uh, 600 a month. Uh, Long-term care, ins care insurance dove does cover this expense. So look at your policy because all policies are a little bit different. The newer policy does, the older policies may not. So um, I'll recommend you talk to your insurance agent and find out uh, if they qualify. So qualifying, we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, I'm not an insurance agent, but I know a lot about this, but I would tell you, talk to your insurance agent. It does cover adult daycare, but your, your loved one has to qualify. That's the main thing. So that's another topic down the road. Um, but it's very costly, as you guys know, it's very costly. Um, and, you know, I tell people when it comes to families taking care of their loved ones, um, doing it themselves, it can, it can cause a lot of friction in a family. Uh, typically the oldest son or daughter will lead the way. Um, and everyone else gotta follow in line and do what they say they gotta do. Uh, which is good and bad, depends on the situation. Um, we, a lot of times we see the oldest sibling comes in from the mainland once a year, said, okay, we gotta do this, 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 I'll take care of, I'll control of all the money, da, da, da. 
and it caused a lot of problems. Um, at the end of this workshop, I'll explain to you some of the ways to solve these issues because family infighting is big. Um, it, it, it's just, you know, family is the first line of defense for caregiving. It's the family. And we all want to take care of our loved one, but, you know, not everybody feels that way in a family. You know, um, people move to the mainland, they don't come back so often. Uh, everybody has a different idea of what quality of care, quality of care is um, and what they're willing to do. And I tell people caregiving is not equal. You know, what you think is fair is not equal. Um, it, sometimes it does work, most times it does not. So understand that, uh, take it to heart. Uh, I recommend always to take in workshops like these. Um, we do a radio show every weekend, 8 to 9 a.m. Uh, that we talk about different topics on aging. Uh, we've talked about hospice. And um, it's just something that th this is a part of life that's really important to all of us. And how do we navigate that? That's the biggest thing we want to come away with. How do we navigate this? How do we plan? Uh, what are the options? Basically, I tell people, you know, if the family can take care of mom and dad, great, but it's going to affect your life. I, I had a, a relative of mine uh, taking care of their mother for, I think, 10 or 15 years. I said, you know, down the road, it's going to get harder. And it's going to ruin your life. And that person said it already has. Very sad. This person went through a divorce. Um, the wife just couldn't take it anymore. They're all living together. Uh, and he said, I'm out of here. It caused a lot of infighting. Um, it takes a lot of understanding of the disease they have, possibly, or the kind of care. Uh, it gets very emotional. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't get too financial, but that'll break it apart. Um, dealing with the cost of care is huge. Um, but I tell people, look at adult daycare. Uh, for $70 to $75 a day from 8 to 5 o'clock, two meals, sometimes three a day. They have social contact. They're in a relatively secure, safe spot, um, whether it's in a facility or a church. It, it's really, really important to look at that. Now, I've had three cases recently. They say, oh, my mom will never go there. Or my mom only speaks Chinese or Japanese. I said, I get it. But the reality is, are you going to knock yourself out or retire from work to take care of mom during the daytime? No. Hopefully you can if you're able to. But a lot of times it doesn't. So these are situations you have to understand that you have to walk them through the scenario. Slowly plant seeds over time. And everybody's family is different. Everybody's loved one is different. How to make the decision-making process. But, you know, we had a good friend of mine that I told, he said, you know what, if you can't do this, adult day center or bringing in a caregiver into the house is going to be the only solutions. Well, she won't put up with a, with a caregiver. So I said, check out the adult day center. Let her sit around. Tell me to talk to the lady and let her look around. She'll find people her own age. Maybe their own health, health status is the same. Um, maybe you may know somebody there. And uh, slowly walk them into that path of, hey, this is not too bad here. And you'll be around people your age versus sitting home watching TV all day long. So this person did it. And after I believe it was two or three months, they'll wake up four o'clock in the morning. Okay, I'm ready to go to the, the day care, daycare place. Um, and it worked. Uh, there are a few uh, adult day centers that have Japanese speaking only. Um, I have not found one that speaks Chinese, which is a bit harder but we're looking for caregivers that speak Chinese. Um, uh, obviously your CNA, Certified Nurses Aid, is, is a, is a uh, option for you. Um, but a lot of times it's the relationship. Uh, I had a client of mine that did the adult daycare and had, had a, um, my, this lady was Japanese and they had a Polynesian lady come in, great caregiver but she just didn't like her. She wanted an Asian, um, she was old school and wanted an Asian um, caregiver. So we switched it out, it was fine. Um, but I'm telling you, Filipinos, the Polynesians, Tongan Samoans are great caregivers out there. Um, I think that's the future. If we can work, find a way to um, work some kind of work, for, work visa for those countries, 
to bring in caregivers. And that's the biggest problem right now, as you guys know. Um, it's just something that is not going to get any better. Um, I thought to the two of the politicians running for governor that this is this is the way to go. Um, the young kids today don't want to do this kind of work, and it's difficult. And they're getting minimum wage. Uh, it's not glamorous. It's not sexy. It's not fun. It's just boring, actually. So this is something in the area of caregivers, the lack of caregivers is a huge problem. This is a problem worldwide, by the way. Um, assisted living is, is a, if you can afford it, uh, like I said, these facilities will run you 4,500 to 5,500, depending on the setting, depending on the size of the room. Most of them are studios. Um, there are one bedrooms, uh, two bedrooms, depending on the facility. Um, but it, 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 real estate in Hawaii is very expensive. So as you can kind of figure out, you know, one bedroom probably costs you like more than $6,000 a, a month, but they're pretty all inclusive. They clean your room once a week, I believe, or, or to wash your clothes. Um, a lot of facilities has a hairdresser on site or comes into the site, physical therapist. Um, you buy or rent every month. Um, if you're gonna long-term or you possibly, you have other family members may need a unit. May, you need a unit. Uh, I would, um, uh, Kalakaua, one Kalakaua has rentals that you can buy. Uh, Arcadia 15 Craigside, Kahalanui, you buy it, but you care for life, which is a great thing. I've looked at that myself. Um, assisted living uh, is great. It's a great lifestyle. You don't need to care right now, but you it will come and go. They have bus service because that's one thing I look forward to because I'm driving is a pet peeve of mine. I don't like to drive, uh, but bus service. Uh, they go every day to some place, even take you to the doctor. Uh, it, it's a great lifestyle. I would tell everybody to take a deep dive and look into what the services are. Um, my own mother-in-law uh, moved into one Kalakaua and ran, met a, a cousin she hasn't seen in 40 years. She met a classmate she hasn't seen in over 60 years. Amazing. Um, she never liked the pool. She started going to pool. She never exercised. She started exercising. So these communities are wonderful. I highly recommend everybody take a look at this if they can afford it. Um, and you know, when I say afford it, that's a big question because I tell people it comes down to quality of life. What can you afford to improve your quality of life or retain or have a better quality of life than the past? So can't take the money with you. If you're worried about the kids or your heirs, that might be an issue. But having a quality of life this late stage is really, really important. Uh, I can't stress it enough. Um, the DIY, do it yourself, and hopefully help from other family members, neighbors, friends. Uh, I, I knew several people that had a whole team, and it's wonderful. A lot of churches today have um, volunteers from the church that help take you to take you dinners, uh, take you to the mall. Uh, take you to a doctor. So reach out to your church or join a church. As you folks all know, um, Project Donna is a faith-based organization. That's how they started, through the churches. And they're, they are mostly in Oahu, but I believe they have Hilo and Kauai. Uh, so I would highly check that out. Um, they even have a, a service where they'll call you once a week or write your letter once a week or visit you once a week. Uh, there was a volunteer that was there for 30 years, I believe, and she took him to shopping once a week, every week for 30 years, to the point where she almost found his family, and she even would spend Thanksgiving with the family. And this volunteer spent all these years uh, looking over this person. So it's a huge, it's a huge endeavor, but it's part of life that we have to understand. In fact. I read a paper every morning when I drink my coffee. And this morning's newspaper, if you can find that, Pope Francis was talking about, you know, he's retired. And he talked about as he ages, he needs, he needs that must people understand we have to put an importance on taking care of our elders. And that's really, really important. It's really important to um Care for our loved ones, make sure they're happy, make sure they have good quality of life. Um, the little things that we can do for them, uh, whether we take a meal once a week, sit down or call them once a week, it's really important. Um, as they took care of us when we were young, it's really important to understand how can we give back. 
Uh, it's just so important to everybody. Uh, how can families pay for long-term care? This is a big topic. Uh, I counsel families just about every day on this topic because of my, my day job, the reverse mortgage. Um, it's something that I got involved with many years ago because I'm the first one to tell you whether reverse mortgage is good or not. But it really comes down to if you want to live in a, if you're home for the rest of your life, you're going to need some form of long-term care. Obviously, you know, families and people have planned for long-term care by saving money, whether it's in their portfolio, stocks, bonds, IRA, Roth IRA, savings. Um, that's usually what happens first. Uh, if the kids can pay that, great. But typically, that's, that's what happens. Uh, they self-fund the from their retirement portfolio. If that's not enough, they'll turn to the home equity, which we'll cover in a little bit. But, you know, so think about is the left pocket has all your cash, all your IRA, 401k, your stocks, bonds, your right pockets, your home at home. And over time, hopefully you pay down your mortgage to when you retire, you have no mortgage payment. But you have all the equity sitting there uh, that you can utilize. And that's that's the thing. People are now realizing they're turning that, they're trying to turn that into cash. And that cash is either by selling the home, renting the home, or borrowing against it. And statistics show by the time you reach 75, 80 years old, 70% of us will run out of cash. As you guys know, today, very few people have any kind of a pension. And it's really important to understand if, if we don't have a pension or an annuity, which is, works like a pension, we're going to live on Social Security only. A huge number of people in Hawaii live on Social Security only. Um, so that's a really big thing. Um, and if you want to pass on anything to your family, that's another story. So I recommend everybody talk to a financial advisor that understands aging, that understands financial gerontology, as I call it, and understands long-term care. Medicaid is a big topic. So there's Medicaid for health insurance, which is called Quest, or Medicaid for long-term care. Medicaid for long-term care, there are a few specialists out there, or you can call the Medicaid office. They'll send you information on the guidelines. They're very strict. Uh, first couple major things is your property cannot be in a revocable or irrevocable trust to apply for Medicaid for long-term care, where you have to move out of the, your home into a facility, into a foster care home. Yeah, and that's where the state pays for your care. Um, it, it's really important to understand that because back in the day, several attorneys were telling you, put it in an irrevocable trust and you'll qualify for Medicaid. Well, that doesn't work anymore. Unfortunately, uh, government, federal government who pays for, I think, 49% of Medicaid said we need to start collecting on those Medicaid liens. So the property has to be an individual name. And it's a five-year look back if you transfer a title to the kids, five-year look back. Um, there's also an income uh, restraint where they take all your income except for $50. And for individuals, you can only have $2,000 in a bank. Or for a couple, it's over $100,000. So uh, I would recommend you talk, call the Medicaid office or there's a few Medicaid, Medicaid uh, specialists in town that can help you with that application process. Um, and so you'll be if you go on Medicaid, uh, you're going to be sharing a room or a house with other people that you don't know. Um, Medicaid reimbursement is less than private pay. So obviously, whoever, whoever pays for care controls the care. Uh, but you don't have an option. You go where there's a Medicaid bed. Right now, uh, I believe we're 90, 95% full for Medicaid beds. And um, we're going to run out of beds in, in the near future. Uh, we don't have enough Medicaid beds coming on, on online. Um, as our Filipino care homes, um, people pass on or retire. Hopefully their children will take it over but that's also limited. Um, but a really big issue is we, we don't even have enough caregivers to work in these facilities in, in foster homes and, and in Medicaid homes. So it's really critical to understand that and how we're gonna take care of that and plan for that. I highly recommend if you're my age, 62, hopefully I don't need medic, any kind of care for another 20 plus years, but if sooner, we need to understand that, how, how we're gonna do that. So that's really, really important. Majority of people still to get care in the home. And Medicaid does not pay for care in the home, by the way. 
They used to have a whole, uh, program called Nurses Without Walls, where they would come in a few times a week, but they don't have that program anymore. I wish they did. I wish they had a service like that. And that's one of the, if you want to talk to your politician, I wish they had that. Um, Medicaid with, uh, Nursing Without Walls, where they come into the home several times a week. Um, so, uh, like I said, he controls, pays for the care, controls the care. So, in other words, you do not have a choice. Whatever bed's available, that's where you go. Using home equity is a growing um, solution to long-term care as we live longer. The banks and credit unions have 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 uh, uh, homes lot, homes equity lines of credit. However, if you're retired, uh, it may be more difficult to uh, qualify for a line of credit. Um, so it's something to think about. I got in this business doing the FHA HECM Home Equity Conversion Mortgage. It's a home equity line of credit. Works just very similar to a, a bank credit union line of credit. The difference is you're not required to pay that mortgage payment every month. A lot of people don't realize you still can if you want to. Um, and the property still stays in the name of your, your trust. Um, and we don't take the property when you pass away. And uh, qualifying is much easier. And you know, I tell people, if you can stay in a home for the rest of your life, how would that quality of life be without having to make a mortgage payment? So that's a long conversation I have uh, with, with clients of mine, or potential clients of mine. I work with a lot of financial advisors, insurance agents, attorneys. And it's something that uh, we have to take it to heart. We have to start thinking about this down the road uh, because as you guys may know, long-term care is very costly. Uh, it's just something that... Um, the only other great, better way to, to, to solve this issue is get long-term care insurance. So I'll give you an example. I've been doing this 20 years. And I will tell you, 80% of the financial advisors I work with uh, don't thoroughly understand long-term care insurance. I hate to tell you this. A lot of them have not done more than 10 or 20 policies themselves. Um, so work with an advisor that understands and does this on a regular basis. Long-term care insurance, I bought it at... at 59, three years ago, I pay uh, 2,200 a year. Uh, my wife pays, I believe 2,400 a year, a little bit more because they know that she's gonna outlive me and probably need more long-term care. Um, it So the bucket that, they, that you're buying into is up to you and your financial advisor, how are you gonna look at that? How much do you think you're gonna need? Um, there's a few things like elimination period. After three months, six months, then the care will kick in, but you got to pay for the care before that. Um, uh, there are life insurance policies with a long-term care rider that basically if you buy a half a million dollars life insurance, that insurance company knows you're going to die. So they have to pay out at some point down the road. But if you have six months or less to live, they allow you to pull out a portion of the insurance policy to pay for your care. It is not leveraged dollars, it's dollar for dollar. Long-term care insurance is leveraged dollars where you pay a percent cents on a dollar to pay for your care. So my policy I believe starts at 4,500 a month and over time and hopefully the next 20 plus years, there's a life in there's an inflation factor where that'll end up being five to eight to 10,000 a month with leveraged dollars to pay for my care down the road. So that's something that you know you need to talk to an insurance agent, financial advisor that specializes in this. Um, and I can refer you some people, but it's really important to understand everybody's situation is different. Everybody has a different threshold or the financial situation. How long can I pay for myself? Do I care what my children get? The leftover from my 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 estate? Um, can I leverage my home? Do I want to sell my home? Do I want to put a home equity line on my property? So it's a long conversation about how to finance long-term care. And it's really, really important. It's a, so it's a conversation that you want to start now. I recommend people in, in the 50s and 60s, depending on your health, uh, and plan for the worst case scenario, where are you going to need some form of care? And how are we going to finance that? And the risk level, the tolerance level of your health care. It's really important to talk to your financial advisor, your attorney, your insurance agent, uh, your mortgage guy. Really start planning this out. It's so critical. Um, I always recommend to families, I get calls quite a bit. I do not charge for my service. 
at this point. Um, but I will probably have to down the road to charge a minimum fee to council families. Uh, I spend about two to three hours with them, make sure they take good notes, make sure they understand the process, make sure they understand the risk level and understand every family is different. I am a little bit of a pessimist to a certain extent where I look at the worst case scenario because I know things will happen down the road and family members do not. So you have to think that way that when mom, I counsel a family recently, a doctor and his wife, doctor's taking care of mom because mom has got dementia now. And a doctor who is a PCP doesn't understand dementia as well as maybe you would think as a doctor. And it's really not that. It's really about, I said, do you know you're a caregiver now? Because I never really thought about that. Yeah, that's a big issue. It's a big issue because being a caregiver is a whole nother story. It's a whole nother story when it comes to um, dealing with how, you know your wife not being able to cook and clean for you anymore. Uh, not be able to remember the dates or events um not knowing that it's she says she wants this for breakfast but then when you bring the eggs and bacon she can't she doesn't want to eat that she wanted something else um can't find her slippers very commonplace uh obviously she can't drive anymore or cook anymore this doctor's having a hard time with that so i i went into counsel the, the doctor and his family who have a dentist a policeman uh, uh, a social worker and a dentist in the family. So I'm counseling them. I said, talk to your financial advisor, talk to your insurance agent, look at the property, talk to yourselves about if the mom and dad can stay in the home, how are we going to finance that? Because if you have, you know, eight hours, 10 hours a day, you're looking at um, five, 6,000 a month for private, private paid caregiver in the home. And yeah, one one person can move there or stay there, but that disrupts the lifestyle of the, the of that family and their spouse and the kids. Um, there are a few nonprofits out there that do consultation. Case managers are an option, but they're super busy. You pay a minimum fee every month, retainer, and they can solve problems for you. Um, there's only about eight certified senior advisors like myself in Hawaii. Um, and then there are a few more professionals with the CLTC designation, certified in long-term care. Um, very few people that, that specialize in that. Um, financial advisors, um, even though 60% of them are, and 60% of attorneys over 60 have a hard time dealing with that. So it's, it's, a, it's a situation that is, we're struggling with this. We are struggling with this. And we will continue to struggle with this until we can find more solutions. But I would tell everybody, seek out a professional, seek out somebody that has experience um, and understand, you know, everybody has a different idea of long-term care. Everybody has a different idea of quality of care. If it had, everybody has a different idea of what my share should be. Um, and just realize equal, fair doesn't mean equal. You have siblings that live on the mainland, they should come back more often, but they can't afford it. Who pays for that? So all these kind of things come into play. And it's not something you can solve right away. It's not something that may be able to solve the best situation possible. We have to negotiate. We have to settle possibly. So it's something that we deal with every day and it's gonna get worse. Um, and right now 79% of women, 69% of men can need some form of long-term care. We call this a silent tsunami. 15 years ago, we started calling this that. And it's still here. There was a, I went to a conference in 2010 in San Diego on aging. And I have a DVD that sits on my desktop. The DVD they gave out of the 2010 conference said, we're going to solve Alzheimer's in 2020. They thought 10 years ago, well, 2010, that we'd be able to solve it. To this day, right now, there is no firm solution for that so they're spending time now telling people to stay healthy eat healthy exercise get outdoors um and plan for long-term care uh it's it's a crisis it's already here for a lot of families and it's only going to get worse uh i hate to be the bearer of bad news but a lot of people know that 
uh, with shortage of caregivers, uh, shortage of Medicaid beds. Um, so knowing your long-term care statistics, it, it, it's good. I told several politicians 15, 10, 15 years ago, this is going to be the biggest social and financial problem that we're going to face as a state and our families. Many years ago, I believe it was about eight years ago, at the, two, at the Kupuna Caucus, we brought in one of the um, business people from the state. And he told us a very shocking uh, statistic. And I'll leave you with that. Before, I believe, 2010 or 2012, the biggest budgeted department was the Department of Education. In other words, they were the largest funded budget department. It's no longer that. It's Department of Human Services because of Medicaid, which falls under Department of Human Services. And it's only going to get worse as more families need care with health insurance, with long-term care needs on Medicaid beds. It's only going to be get worse. So um, have a plan, talk to professionals, um, and seek out professional help. So if there's any other questions, um, we can drill down to more specifics offline or email me. Um, you can always email me. That's my parents, by the way. They're both in scooters, and they go to Vegas just about every month. And here's my contact information. 